fixturing is half the battle running a CNC machine. I like leaving my vise on the mill table, but I've always wanted a fixture plate I could drop onto the vise, and I want it to be sacrificial so that we can machine it flat, drill through it, etc. So let's whip one up in SolidWorks, HSM Works, and then machine one on the Tormach. Welcome to another Wednesday widget, folks. Here's the SolidWorks model. It is a 12 inch by 8 inch aluminum plate. And the idea is, aside from machining a bunch of the holes, we'll machine these two recesses, which means we can just set it inside the vise and use the vise jaws to tighten against this quarter inch lip right there. We'll see how it works. I, I think it'll work, um, but it's my first time doing something like this, so maybe we'll have improvements. What I like about it is it'll be an easy way to set up and fixture large parts or any sort of part where your vise is not going to be the way to hold it. Just like we did in the Glock slide video. I've done it for a number of customer job parts where you need a pin here or a, a threaded fastener here. This is the idea here is I'm going to probably actually make a couple of different versions of the same plate that have different hole spacing. So hopefully I'll be able to come up with one. In fact, we'll take a look at a part I've got uh, here in a second, but we'll go back to the model. We have three different types of holes. The large ones will be half inch by 13 tapped holes. We're going to thread mill those. These are half inch by 20 tapped holes as well. And then the holes here that don't have a chamfer, just for the chamfer is just for modeling purposes, frankly, to show which ones are threaded. But these that don't have a chamfer are going to be quarter inch reamed holes that we can use for dowel pins to align things either along the X or the Y. I think that's going to be a good, uh, a good recipe. The cool thing is a part like this is really easy to model. We'll walk through it quickly, but you start with the block of aluminum, 8 by 12. Uh, we're doing 3 quarter inches thick, and then we will reset, cut our recess down to hold the vise jaws. And then I just mach I cut, um, model the half by 13 thread, chamfer it for modeling purposes, pattern that. The pattern, by the way, is 2 inches over and 1 inch down. And then the same thing, that's a tapped hole, chamfer that for the, just to show it's tapped, pattern that down once, the pattern there is 13 holes that are all 5 eighths, and then that gets patterned over once, I think that was um, an inch, yeah, inch and a quarter, then that pattern gets patterned over, so you can see that, that these two columns repeat once, twice, three, four, five times. So if we look here, we should see six, actually, because it counts the original. Yep, six. That makes sense. Probably a little bad, bad graphics there. And then the reamed hole, same thing. Pattern it down and over with the dimensions here being over two, down five-eighths. I want a lot of reamed holes because those are what's going to help to align the part up. The trick here to make these things useful is to have the flexibility of always being able to find an existing edge or an existing hole in the workpiece you've got. So the more fasteners and the more reamed holes, the better odds you are. Now with the reamed holes, we can always use parallels or something else to space it off. That's pretty easy. But you do want as many threaded holes as you can to hopefully find something that will work. Here's a great example. This is a part we need to make soon. And if we go ahead and just create an assembly here and we insert that part, now let's just do a quick mate like so, and then we'll keep it parallel so those two faces will set our parallel. Now if we take a look, we can move this around on our fixture plate, oops, and we can see, okay, well these are our reamed holes. So if I, if I put it on line with one of those, over here easily can use this hole with a washer around it to clamp the part down or I could even use one of the quarter 20 holes um, lots of options there so I like it that's the idea whole lot of operations we're gonna bang through this pretty quick if you have specific questions about things I didn't cover enough detail do me a favor and comment below and I'll be sure to either answer the question or even do a dedicated video on the topic We've covered thread milling in HSM Works in another video. You can see a link for that right here uh, below. Otherwise, we're going to spot every single hole here. We're going to drill out for 7 16ths 
for a pre-ream. Then we're going to pre-drill for the tapped holes with the number four drill. We're going to tap with our quarter 20 tap and the tension compression head. Pre-ream, oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier. That was a, um, the 7 16 was for pre-drilling for thread milling. Here we're going to pre-ream uh, with letter C for the quarter inch reamed holes. Ream them and thread mill like so. Now here's what's cool. This is one of the reasons I really like HSM works. For the second job, we'll, have, we'll flip the part over. We need to machine these recesses. And we, you see we've got our coordinate system here so that that's in the center of the vise. Now, to rough it out, we do a 2D adaptive clearing and we're selecting the um, model as a line that didn't exist. So here's the thing, we don't have a straight line across all this. What I used to do with Sprout Cam was pick one little line segment and drag it all the way across, but if you move the model or things could happen where it could go funny on you, it could create an offset uh, on, on an entrance, I didn't like it at all. So it's simple. All I did was back in the S SolidWorks portion of the model is I created a sketch that is a two construction lines that you see right here and we can use those in HSM works here as cam geometry super helpful so we've got that line we created the construction line as the model the stock contours we selected as the box around it and when we do click OK you can see it creates this toolpath which we take a look will rough out this material Now I want a nice clean edge on, um, as a final op, so we're leaving in that op, we're leaving 10 thou, and then we'll come in with a 2D contour, and again, all we're doing is selecting that existing line that we created, and that'll come through and clean it up. Pretty cool, right? Let's go over to the machine and make some chips. We've got our piece. Clamp down. I've got a sacrificial wood board underneath it. You got to be careful with wood. Not always even. It can swell with flood coolant. So what I did, I found my um, two outside edges of the Y and of the X, and I set those so that my zero is right here in the middle of the part. What I now want to do when we set the Z is make sure there's nothing crazy off with how it's clamped down, like so, and we'll just wrap it around. Carefully, don't break Heimer tips. You know, what the movement you're seeing here on the Heimer is something like a few thou. It doesn't take much to realize if you're way off. And again, we don't necessarily care about this being perfectly flat, because once the fixture plate is done, we'll machine it at least the first time, and probably uh, as we continue to use it so that it's always true in the vise. This just makes sure we're not way off. And the last thing tip I have is anytime you're fixturing like this, you want to be careful that, again, the wood sub piece is not the best thing in the world, so you got to be careful. And then we're clamping on the four corners. That can bow it in the middle. We've got the wood right underneath where the toe clamps are. That's important. And then what I like to do, you tap around it. You hear, don't hit up, don't come up and break your Heimer tip. You can hear it's solid. It's really easy to tell when you have a hollow or tinny sound. That means you've got... Um, some bow in it or something that's going to certainly work different might be okay for you, but you want to be careful and aware of that. We are incredibly close, or going to be incredibly close on the uh, spot drill holes right next to the uh, strap clamps on the left side. So we'll just have to see. I can't believe this is going to sound irresponsible. If it crashes, it's just going to be the outside of that ER tool with the barely outside of the nut, which I'm not advocating that as a good thing at all, but um, <laughs> I think we're going to be okay. We got a lot of machining here to do. I think the simulation time is something like an hour and a half, so this is going to be a heck of a lot of fast forwarding because at this point I think the video is more, more about HSM and understanding the philosophy behind this and then hopefully putting this thing to use. Okay, finishing up the spot drills. Looks cool, right? I wish we could have faced it off at first because I think it would look better. It'll look really good when we do that in the vise. Mm -hmm. 
All right, 7 16 drill. This is the pre-thread mill for the half 13 holes. This is actually pretty cool. I like this little drilling operation. We'll see how it holds up over the length of these, this fixture plate, but 1600 RPMs. We're plunging at about 6.5 inches a minute. And as I've talked about before, we're doing that short pecking. So we're pecking, I think every 90 thou. But then in HSM works, what we can do is have a full retract every say 0.3 inches. So it's not gonna do a little mini peck the whole width of the hole. It's gonna give it two or three breaks to really do a full retract. Make sure you're not bird nesting to get the chips out of there. I like it, it making, it's making a nice chip and it's avoiding the bird nesting, which uh, I still stick around for this type of thing, but in terms of walking away from the machine and letting it you know, cut 200 holes, this is something I like, but you also, of course, want to keep the speeds and feeds up, which is uh, in the cycle time, which I think this is helping with. So let's let this thing do its thing, and we'll be back and, and see how she does. Sweet, haven't touched it, hasn't birds nested at all. You can see a pile of chips on the table, and that's just where I want them, on the table, not on the drill bit. I think this is the last 716th hole. Yep. All right. Tool four, which for me is a number seven drill. Same thing. We're doing the uh, little miniature peck with, um, I thought I saw it move on an XY before it retracted fully, which is not good. Nope, it's okay, I think. Uh, we're doing the miniature pecks with, with periodic full retracts. I like that. This, this tool act drill bit actually needs sharpened a little bit. But let's uh, let her do, do her work. We'll be right back. All right, tapping some quarter 20. I don't think I have ever tapped this many holes in one, in fact, I'm sure, in one setup. I'm only going 0.4 inches deep because I don't need to go all the way through. And frankly, I think, um, and maybe I'm being a chicken here, I think that would increase the likelihood of breaking the tap, uh, you know, due to it clogging up or something. And once it's tapped and started straight, I, um, would have no problem running it a little bit deeper if needed, but I don't think we will. So it's working pretty good so far. Uh, we'll keep running and we'll be back to thread mill, uh, which will finish up in this fixture position. All right, thread milling is done. I meant to videotape it, but I got a phone call and got distracted and it was done before I knew it. But looks great and more importantly, we have a great thread fit. That's what I love about thread milling, folks. Just awesome. We are using this guy right here from Lakeshore Carbide and I actually did take an additional two thousandths on the radius, so four thousandths overall, to get that fit that I wanted. That's what I like. We can adjust that fit though. Reamed holes are great. Nice pop. I can't pop test it but it's a, it's a perfect fit. You can feel it and see it. Um, I did have one problem though. That's why I've got some of these Sharpie holes. I, should, I called it on the video and I should have fixed it. That a number seven drill was a little dull and when you're drilling this many holes, it bit me on this hole back here. The drill actually broke off. I used a carbide end mill and just poked it right out. No problem at all. And uh, actually I should still have good thread engagement on that hole. See, actually I think it was this one. It's got the raised up part. Yeah, thread's a little sloppy. No big deal at all. Maybe we'll heal coil it. What I also had to do was change from that peck, uh, pecking, um, what I also had to do was change from the rapid pecking to full retract pecking because I lost confidence. And it's something I haven't talked about a lot, but machining confidence is huge, and especially in CNC when you're not going to necessarily sit there and in uh, making a larger part like this where there's more work, there's more holes, you don't want to ruin a work piece. And it's something I love about the Tormach. I don't single block code. I have a huge amount of confidence in it. I really don't have problems, but man, when you break a drill bit, it really erodes your confidence and you got to get back up on the horse. Yes, I backed my feeds and speeds down a little, but I did go ahead and do a full retract and man, that crushed my cycle time. That really made this slower. 
not a big deal. We're not making these for sale or for profit, but it matters. So something I get now need to do is go work on that. I got to get smart. I have a great recipe for the larger, the 7 16 a half inch um, drills. You saw that. I need to get that recipe nailed down for the quarter inch and the drills around that size that we can bang, bang through those quicker, not have them chip load and have them last. Let's clean up the four outside edges. We hold it in the vise, we'll be able to do that in one fell swoop, which is great. So we'll do a number 11 roughing tool and a number 32 cleanup tool. You'll see those in a second. The real question, how do you fixture this uh, with, the, with respect to the origin? Right now the origin's right in the middle of the plate. We don't have an accurate X and we really don't even have an accurate Y. So let's do this. We've got a reamed hole and we know we're at least being held um, perpendicular or parallel at least along the X. So go to, oops, yeah, go to sketch, create a sketch and choose a point. It's going to ask us for the sketch plane and we'll pick this one. Hover over this circle, we get the center dot, click there, click exit sketch, and now we got a little point there, right? And it's a little bit above where we're currently at. Right click on job, choose edit, right click on job, choose edit, change it from stock orientation to see your origin forget and click on the point and or click on this window here whatever that's called workpiece whatever and click on our little dot and boom look at that now we're going to go find the center of that uh, reamed hole and that'll be our xyz zero all right plunge down into the hole go left Hit X0 on the left side, and then now jog to the right side of the hole. Find the edge of the right side of the hole, and then just in mock, sorry, that's funny, mock three, path pilot hit divide by two. Now go to um, X0, so we'll just type that in G0 and X0, F5. Now we'll do the Y. Find the top. Y zero, and then find the bottom. Divide by two. Now you can go find the X again to double check it for an additional level of accuracy. In fact, let's just do that. G zero one, we want to go to Y zero now. Y zero, F five. So negative 1273, let's see if we're plus 1273 on the other side. If we are, that hole's a little, a little big. Perfect. <laughs> Look at that, folks. 1272 within a tenth. How awesome is that? All right, we're cleaning up the sides here. I actually almost goofed. I um, was thinking I could do it in one operation around, but of course we're not going to have clearance over the, the front jaw of the vise here. So what we'll do is we'll, we just separated the ops, you'll see, 
and we'll just cut this one a little shallower. So cleaning up the two X sides here with tool 11, which is that half inch three flute carbide rougher, 2800 RPMs, 20 inches a minute, and about a 0.1 inch step over. And to clean up, three flute carbide end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. It's got some aluminum coating. I should should know what it is, but I don't. They're 5,100 RPMs, only 10 inches a minute, and uh, only a 10 thou width of cut because I want this to be a decent surface finish. Pretty cool, the Superfly cut quality. You can see the reflection of the end mill and its holder in the face of that material of the fixture plate. I, I love that tool, I really do. And last but not least, clean up the Y. We'll see, okay, good. I didn't think we'd be trimming off too much here because the extrusion from the uh, from Al Alro was only, I think, what would we measure that? 40 thou over, so I guess in theory it should be a 20 thou cut. Um, but 20,000 is plenty. We'll be cleaning it up, which, uh, well, the real test will be if the front side cleans up. I think we'll be good. And are we going to get a cut? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Look at that, folks. I think it's pretty cool. I want to make more of these. I've got to figure out how to get the quarter inch and letter C drilling down a little faster, or number seven and letter C, which shouldn't be a problem. My thought is, I was actually thinking about this the other night when I was going to sleep, I should be able to do a full retract, but with a deeper peck interval, I think. And also might be one of those times where my MQL, Trico, minimal quantity lubrication, Mr. Coolant system, is inferior to flood coolant. I don't know that, but I'm just wondering. But if I can get the quarter inch uh, drilling, or you know, the 0.2 inch drills that we gotta do down, I suppose I can put less holes in the plate too. Then what else? Oh, so here we go. Now we're just a hair, we're just starting to lose some cut there on the front edge. I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't love it, um, but I would also say this is not aerospace. This is a, um, the biggest problem with that is, is you want to make sure you know it's not a true edge. But we're going back to uh, making more of these. I could then buy a proper thread mill for half 13, not just a single point thread mill, and you could rip through the tapped holes. Well, that's a wrap, folks, for this week's Wednesday widget. I love this fixture plate. If you're interested in seeing this, please subscribe or stay tuned. We'll have, we'll have more where we're going to use this. And if you aren't familiar with our channel, we love publishing things on at-home manufacturing, whether it's CNC, CAD, CAM, Arduino projects, prototyping, and more. As always, I really appreciate the thumbs up, the comments, liking the video, and sharing it with your friends. Take care, folks. See you soon.